From the 21st to the 23rd century, the Klingon Empire was one of the most powerful and most dangerous governments that existed in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. They were able to exert both soft and military power well outside of their borders, and the mere concept of war with them brought pause to even the Vulcan High Command and Andorian Empire. However, the power of these warriors and their prestige would slowly wane into the mid-23rd century and on. Hell, the very fabric of the culture would be considered corrupt by the 24th century. While there are many markers that could show this degradation, I would argue that the warships of the Klingon Empire are one of the most obvious. Throughout the first initial three centuries I mentioned, the Klingon warships would be feared, but ultimately, these vessels would become less and less effective. As the Federation is formed and the Romulans become reclusive, innovations of both of the Empire's technologies would occur, however, Klingon technology largely stagnated. Sure, there would be some evolutions in different variants of the Klingon Bird of Prey, and while initially powerful, it would stay a symbol of strength. Slowly, it stopped being able to match the likes of the Galaxy-class starship and that of the Romulan Dedera Dex vessel. In fact, for the Klingon Empire to win against these various ships, they would have to start employing multiple vessels in order to combat them. It would almost have to be a 3 to 1 ratio to even have a chance. That said, there would be two starships that attempt to reverse this trend, and would even bring the Empire somewhat into parity with other powers. One of these is the Forcha-class vessel something we'll talk about later. But the other one is, well, of course, the Negvar. Hey guys, this may come as a complete surprise to you, but YouTube comments can be pretty toxic. In them, I've learned that, well, surprise, I'm actually overweight. And that said, because I believe in progressive values and helping people, I also have a lot of soy, which means that I have to watch what I eat. But just because I want to watch what I eat, doesn't mean I have to sacrifice eating something delicious. Unlike other cereal, Magic Spoon brings you a delicious and healthy alternative to other things that might not be so savory. This allows you to be guilt free. Just one bite takes you back to when you were watching Saturday morning cartoons and a loving life. The different flavors means that it's never boring and you will absolutely love it. This stuff is crazy healthy with zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. That's 140 calories. And honestly, how many cereals can you say that are keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb? If you want to support the channel, go to magicspoon.com forward slash lore, or simply utilize code lore to get $5 off any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that if you aren't 100% happy, you'll get your money back. No questions asked. Come on guys, try it out. Supporting the sponsors supports the channel. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash lore, or use the code lore today to get $5 off. And that's why I choose Magic Spoon cereal. Mmm. Losing soy and weight. The Negvar warship is the height of imperial power in the 24th century. Active as early as 2372, we can't be sure exactly when it was first launched. What we do know is that major fleet strategies would be set around this specific vessel. The Negvar is observed in several engagements, including the attack on Deep Space Nine, as well as the Dominion War. While there would be variations on the basic construction in alternate timelines, in the Prime timeline, the base structure of the vessel includes similar designs that we've seen of other vessels, well, at least Klingon vessels. It has a spherical head where the bridge is located and is connected down a long neck to the secondary hull where you'd have engineering and other critical functions. The secondary hull would be connected to two warp nacelles on either side so that it would be warp capable. Now I will have a side note on these warp nacelles. For those who are particularly observant, you'll notice that the warp nacelles on the Negvar and the Vorcha don't resemble that of what we see in previous designs. Honestly, they seem to be completely different from historical precedent. While there never is a canon explanation, these vessels while there is never a canon explanation, these vessels do appear after the Federation Klingon Alliance. It is honestly my preference to believe that after the military alliance was established, Starfleet engineers began to work with Klingon counterparts to design more durable designs, which ultimately would lead to the ships that look eerily similar to Starfleet ships. It would only make sense that Starfleet would help out their allies, after all. The offensive weaponry of this vessel was extremely powerful. 
This included main disruptors that are observed being shot from the underbelly of the vessel. It would have a cloaking device as well as formidable shielding. The Negvar is probably one of the most powerful vessels of its time. Semi-cannon resources have this behemoth being constructed at the Quonos Orbital Factory Base. It has a crew accommodation of 2,500 warriors and space for flight crew and troops. The ship had a top warp of 9.6 with 20 ship-mounted disruptor cannons, one large forward disruptor, and four torpedo launchers. The Negvar is honestly a fan favorite of non-Federation ships, and it's easy to see why. It's the ship of warriors and one that would bring honor to anyone's house. But these are just my opinions. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next. Lore Reloaded.